coming over here, I was trying to think how best to explain our changing attitude to crypto over the years. Major news for cryptocurrency. If it was ever in question how big this space will be, I want to show you a clip of BIS. That's Bank for International Settlements. And think of this organization as sort of a bank for the banks. Our mission is to support central banks' pursuit of monetary and financial stability through international cooperation and act as a bank for central banks. So by the time you get to the end of 2023, we believe that we will have global standards in place. Now the mainstream media won't share this with you, I will. Also news involving DeFi, as well as a Mark Cuban and crypto. Watch to the end, but listen to the agenda these bankers have for cryptocurrency. He starts by just talking about the history, how crypto got on his radar. This uh, uh, session on this extremely important topic that has taken a lot of our time recently. And coming over here, I was trying to think how best to explain our changing attitude to crypto over the years. And if you think of crypto as having developed in a set of phases or cycles. So if you look back at the beginning, back famously in 2008 and 2009, it was set up. Okay, then you had a first, as I, as I see it, this is my own sort of informal history, uh, a first sort of wave or boom around the time Litecoin was established in 2011. They built up a few assets. Then you had another sort of crypto period in 2013, 2015. At the time, Ethereum was founded, but also at the time that people discovered that crypto was very good for sanctions busting and uh, very good for money laundering. That was a period that, that sort of uh, uh, drew to a lot of people's attention. But at that point, it wasn't particularly uh, impacting, frankly, on securities markets. But the next wave of crypto, which happened at the time of the ICO craze around 2017, 2018, the initial coin offering phase, that brought them into close relationship with, with uh, a securities market. And now that the global elite are starting to understand that crypto is not going away, listen to him explain how they're about to give global recommendations by the end of 2023. So the ICO craze ended, but it did impact a number of, of our members and a number of jurisdictions because at that time you first saw jurisdictions starting to develop uh, um, uh, regulatory frameworks. So you will see that still in the legislation of some jurisdictions that took initiatives at that time to try to deal with, with uh, crypto. So we went through a period of assessment. We produced a number of reports. So by the time you get to the end of 2023, we believe that we will have global standards in place recommending how crypto should be regulated insofar as they are a securities regulatory challenge. And then we will move on to the same sort of issues that Bilen has, uh, uh, which are about monitoring and implementation and how we get from a situation where we have global standards to one where we have countries around the world conforming to those standards. This is wild to see cryptocurrency truly for the first time in its existence, in, in my experience in crypto, to see this space on a global stage being talked about by the elites in finance. And why this matters is because while well, the mainstream will share with you, with me, it was just a bubble. Is that they could kind of see anything in it that they wanted to, mm. right? I mean, on one level, it's very simple. It's a get rich quick scheme. What was marketed as the future of money and all you needed to invest in the future of money was the willingness to part with the current the version. Current, the current version. Yeah, yeah. Retail gets this information while the elites get the real information and understand this space is only growing. And most of you have heard the Mark Cuban news by now. I want to go over this with you, but I do want to share a pretty exciting announcement from partner of the channel, Orox. We're excited to announce the release of Orox Wallet Pro, a seamless, user-friendly, and decentralized terminal built directly into the Orox Wallet extension to give you the edge to stay ahead of the DeFi competition. I will put a link down below if you want to check it out. But just to clue everybody in, give me two minutes and let me share with you why this is different, why many people are saying this is a better DeFi wallet. So again, purely informational, meet the Orox Wallet Pro, DeFi without compromise. Meaning the goal is powered by DeFi, but inspired by CeFi. And we're not gonna go into everything today, but if I could just highlight three of these specific features that to me are the most exciting. Number one, out of three, number one, trade like a pro, 
get the edge against the competition, meaning this wallet allows you to be faster. Every second matters when the rush and the FOMO begins on a hot new token. That's why the Aurox Wallet Pro puts you in control every single step standing between you and placing the order is eliminated. With a single click, your order executes. It's that simple. So as you can see, visually much more intuitive, much simpler than other DeFi wallets in the space. Again, this also connects directly to a trading terminal, which is cool. And no more fumbling with annoying wallet confirmations and pop-ups causing you to miss groundbreaking trades. So that was cool thing number one. Cool thing number two, demystifying your portfolio. Tracking your portfolio progress is one of the biggest challenges in DeFi, yet it's one of the most important aspects of trading and investing. In most cases to track your portfolio, you either got to use multiple platforms or make your own spreadsheet, etc. Well, with the Aurox Wallet Pro, your entire portfolio data is at your fingertips. So here is that nice visual view balances, token prices, transactions, and historical value of all your wallets in one view across five major blockchains. And also wondering how your competition is doing, open a new tab and paste the wallet address, if you know it, of another trader and view their portfolio instantly. Again, no other DeFi wallet that I know has all of these features. And then cool thing number three, although I could go on, is near instant tracking and charting. So this one, pretty self-explanatory. All the cool trading metric features you find on a trading view, for example, you can get with Aurox. And also this is worth mentioning very quickly, spot scams and fake tokens. So a major focus on security, Aurox wallet users can feel confident executing transactions on dApps by utilizing simulation, proactive anti-phishing, domain monitoring, and various other security features built in. Here is the visual right here. And with the help of our partners at GoPlus, the Aurox Wallet Pro displays yellow and red warnings next to the token names on the screener and the search. This contract-based analysis notifies the user of potentially risky and high-risk tokens. Again, I think this is really cool. Link down below right now for you to check out. And next piece of news, AI-generated fake news sparks rumors of Gary Gensler's resignation. So I reported on this a few days ago at the end of this video, and again, check the timestamps, we were deliberating, is this actually real? Has Gary Gensler really resigned? I mean, there was anonymous sources, but it was still in question. Well, I'm always gonna keep it 100 with you. When I get new information, I will immediately update you. And on July 1st, a news story did appear on a web website dubbed CryptoAlert, claiming that Gensler had submitted his resignation following an internal investigation, citing an anonymous official. Well, turns out that was AI. In fact, Cointelegraph found the article's text scored a 96.8% on a third-party AI detector, indicating there is a high likelihood the vast majority of the text was generated by AI. So again, at the end of that video, we were talking about the legitimacy. Well, with further research, Gary Gensler is still in office. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban and John Reed Stark clash over the cause of FTX's collapse. And I thought this was super interesting. As a reminder, John Reed Stark is a former SEC employee. In fact, he was the former chief of the SEC's Office of Internet Enforcement. Mark Cuban on our channel has always expressed his dissatisfaction with the SEC. And so when the SEC comes in and says they want to protect investors from crypto, they're, they're not even doing their job with what the area they're supposed to do their job. So the SEC, in Mark's words, are incredibly hypocritical. He goes on to say that in the full interview. Well, the news today is this. John Reed Stark tweeted that CBDCs, as well as crypto in general, is an absurd financial idea, and also saying that crypto is to blame for the FTX collapse. Mark Cuban defends crypto, and says the SEC is to blame for the FTX debacle. You should read up on how Japan deals with regulation. When FTX crashed, no one in FTX Japan lost money. If the US SEC had followed their example by setting clear regulations that required the separation of customer and business funds and clear wallet requirements, 
no one here would have lost money on FTX. So the FTX users in Japan got to keep all their money because they had different regulations. They had clearer regulations that separated the money. You need to face the fact of the matter that crypto is one more technology that will succeed or fail based on its merits. It's the SEC that chose the wrong path to regulate crypto and cost billions. The SEC is not infallible. It makes mistakes. In this case, it chose the wrong course. It was arrogant in thinking that its framework covered every possible situation. Give me your thoughts. What do you think? Be sure to join us in Portugal next week at the Blockdown Festival. Use code altcoindaily50 for 50% off your ticket.